Hi everybody, Wave 3 News meteorologist Ryan Hoke here with a Hokey video blog update for Saturday morning, the day after a big snow for a lot of us, especially south of Louisville. For the rest of us, pretty decent snow in a lot of places here. Let's go through today's Hokey weather fact first because it gives you a pretty good tip if you're out in the snow today. Snow reflects up to 80% of ultraviolet radiation from the sun. It's going to come right down on the snow, bounce right back up at your face. So don't forget to wear sunscreen or cover up any sort of exposed skin that you may have, especially around your facial area. We don't want folks getting sunburned out there if you're out sledding or shoveling snow out the driveway today. Not going to see a whole lot of sun early to start the day, even toward noontime, not a whole lot, but I think this afternoon we'll get a little bit more sunshine. Cloudy skies now from our Kentucky One Health SkyTrack camera at Jewish Hospital in downtown Louisville. The roads look pretty good. Now here's our observed snowfall map. This is a rough map, all right? This is basically uh, reports from the National Weather Service that we got in here. They drew a map this morning, combined it with some of what we saw around here uh, in terms of reports that we got in here at the station and came up with this map here. You'll see out to the uh, eastern portions of Jefferson County moving into Oldham and Shelby counties, just not a whole lot of snow there. There was kind of this bubble that formed around those areas. We had a dry air slot in here initially, which kind of cut off the snow uh, to begin with and then it saturated on up, but once we got the air saturated, the snow bands just didn't line up over those areas quite as much. So, really difficult to get higher snow totals out there. A little higher to our west, had up to 5 inches in the knobs, and that's just like less than one county width away from where we had like an inch down in uh, Jefferson Town. So, your mileage may vary. This is not a perfect map. I understand that. And uh, with a banded snow situation like this, it's very difficult to tell you exactly what's going to happen in your backyard because a mile down the road from you, you may have five inches. Meanwhile, you're looking at like nothing here in your backyard. Meteorology just isn't precise enough of a science at this stage in time to deal with banded snow events in the fashion that people want us to. All right, that's kind of the truth here of the matter. So when uh, folks tweet at us like, oh, you're never right, that's not the correct forecast, you know, why are you always doing this? And we're, basically, we tweet them back like, that's not how meteorology works, all right? We give you our best guess based on the latest data and our previous knowledge and training in the science of meteorology. And so this is what we come up with, all right? Forecast actually worked out pretty good, especially in our southern counties where they got more than a foot. Campbellsville down to Adair County. Unfortunately, Campbellsville yesterday dealt with uh, issues with their water system because they had electrical outages, which caused pumping issues. Just not a good combination of things down there. This morning, we're waking up to temperatures in the 20s down in Columbia, where they've got the thick snowpack. Uh, upper teens from Jasper up to Seymour at this point. Still got the clouds overhead. I've given us a mostly cloudy forecast today because I still think most of this, the clouds uh, we'll be here as we go throughout at least the first eight hours of the day here. So probably until, ooh, say 2 or 3 o'clock uh, this afternoon is when we'll begin to start mixing in some peaks of sunshine here. Uh, you'll notice the snowstorm over the eastern half of the nation. This is a big one, folks. I mean, we're talking historic snowfall totals from D.C. up toward Baltimore. See those heavy snow bands uh, continuing to really come in here from the Atlantic Ocean. I know uh, Washington, D.C., and the Baltimore Metroplex right here, kind of a continuous city uh, almost there, expecting more than two feet of snow. I mean, they dealt with an inch of snow uh, just a couple days ago, and it shut down the city. Now they're expecting maybe 30 or more. I mean, that's just not good. Um, you may remember there was a story out that the presidential motorcade got stuck in some of the traffic, and it took them over an hour to get to the airport from the White House because all the snow they had just with that one inch of snow. You can imagine uh, what things will be like as we go throughout today out there. Yikes. Already a foot of snow on the ground uh, out in D.C. right now. I just got a report in about that. All right, future cast for today here in Metro Louisville. You'll notice 32 degrees by 3 o'clock. I think we'll only make it to 30. Future cast isn't really seeing the snowpack quite so well. Down to the south, we do have uh, lower temperatures, probably in the, only in the 20s today with that very thick snowpack down there. Uh, by tonight, the clouds begin to clear out somewhat. The temperatures begin to drop. We'll be down in the teens. Again, I don't think this is quite high enough, or low enough, I should say, in temperature as we go throughout tonight. Probably single digits uh, in areas just south of the city, down to zero, probably down toward Taylor, Green, Hart, and Adair counties. You guys stand the most risk at that, even parts of Marion County, too. Uh, but around here in Metro Louisville, probably down to about 10 degrees. This gray shade right here 
very interesting. And uh, we've only begun to hone in on this this morning because it's hard to detect fog much more than a day out in advance here. Uh, but we are watching for the potential for patchy freezing fog tonight. Uh, basically what happens here is you get all that snow down there. It, it cools everything very efficiently. You get an inversion in place and fog is able to form very easily when you get something like that uh, in place. So we'll be watching that. Not only the RPM model here that you're seeing picking up on that, but also the 4-kilometer NAM model pulled up some of the soundings uh, this morning for tomorrow morning showing that very low level high relative humidity in the atmosphere which is uh, basically it trying to see the fog. So We'll watch that. Otherwise, those temperatures go down, and any sort of freezing fog activity tomorrow would cause a few additional slick spots on area roads. Here's the hour-by-hour hour hour forecast today. You see we get up to 30 here in the city, down into the teens as we go throughout the overnight hours. But uh, those road impacts are definitely going to be felt out there this morning. The side roads, the neighborhood streets in bad shape. My street, horrible shape. Oh, good thing I drive with an all-wheel drive vehicle or else I wouldn't be here this morning. Uh, that's for sure. Slick spots, uh, afternoon and evening too. A little bit of patchy fog in the morning, may add a little fly to the ointment there. But hey, Sunday afternoon, we're in the mid-30s. Things begin to melt. We'll be above freezing. It's just fine. Monday, we'll be in the 40s. Then we get a few showers in here Monday late afternoon and into the evening. Here's that seven-day breakdown. I want to show you that Monday chance in a little more detail here as the North American Mesoscale scale model points it out for you here. Showers moving in probably a little sooner than what the NAM has, so probably a little closer to like 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the evening rather than about uh, 10 o'clock here. But the interesting thing is on the back side of this, there may be some snow showers or flurries as the cold air on the back side of this front moves on in. It's not going to be a big deal. Nothing like the last couple of snow events we've had. Don't even worry about it, all right? Just uh, realize that we're getting ready to he head into a big, nice warming pattern. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we jump up 10 degrees in high temperature between those days. And the earliest alert outlook really tells the story here because we get back up into the 50s on the 30th and the 31st. Then I pulled the trigger on 60 degrees for the 1st of February. How about them apples? Yeah, I think a lot of folks could use a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of warmer temperatures here uh, as we go through time. But unfortunately, I think these temperatures uh, will be accompanied by some rain on both sides of it here, probably the 31st and then into uh, the 2nd. And then by the 3rd, we got another rain-to-snow thing we'll have to deal with. That's way down the road, and then that plunges us back into cooler temperatures. And, and we may kind of restart this pattern, uh, the one that started earlier in the month, where we got into this clipper-type system scenario, and then the southern stream stuff came in. That may restart. Uh, we'll see, because the 5th looks like maybe some type of clipper system around that time. We will otherwise keep track of that and see how it works out. All right, folks, that's it for now. Uh, stay safe out there today on the roads. Watch out for a little patchy freezing fog tomorrow. I'm in for Andy tonight. You'll see me at 6 and 11. He's in for me tomorrow on sunrise. Have a great weekend.